remembering Sudhir Sarkar. Born on the 21st of February, 1889, Sudhir Sarkar was destined to lead a very eventful and inspiring life. At the age of 19, Sudhir was among the first batch of revolutionaries to be sent to the Andaman's cellular jail. His was a life lived for the motherland and for his master, Sri Aurobindo. We remember Sudhir Sarkar on his birth anniversary. The year was 1905. India was under the yoke of British rule and the spirit of its people was dormant. Then came Sri Aurobindo, who awakened the nation by launching a new movement of passive resistance, boycott and national education. He reached the heart of the people through his powerful speeches and articles which demanded complete independence from the British. Sri Aurobindo said, I look upon my country as the mother. I adore her. I worship her as the mother. What would a son do if a demon sat on his mother's breast and started sucking her blood? Would he quietly sit down to his dinner, amuse himself with his wife and children? Or would he rush out to deliver his mother? Sri Aurobindo said, Our call is to young India. It is the young who must be the builders of the new world. Come then, hearken to the call of the mother. She is waiting to be worshipped. Such words inspired the youth of India to abandon their families, their positions, their careers, everything, and join this movement to free their motherland. Sudhir was one of the young men who heard the call. In 1907, he joined the revolutionary group and took the following oath, writing with his own blood before the image of Kali. 
I hereby promise to abide by the laws and rules that govern the Revolutionary Party and to follow its strictest norms even at the cost of my life. Sudhir left his home and family. He then began living with Sri Aurobindo at his residence for almost a year. Sudhir used to run various errands. He also got to observe Sri Aurobindo from up close. His infinite compassion, his so-called anger, his tenderness and consideration in various situations. He could not but admire him more and more and see him as a god. Although just 18 years of age, Sudhir became a trusted colleague of Parindra Kumar Ghosh, Ullas Kardat, Hem Chandra and others. In 1907, Sri Aurobindo went to the Surat Congress meeting. Sudhir was sent as his bodyguard. Sri Aurobindo, along with Sudhir, went to Bombay, Baroda, Pune and other places to speak and light the flame of nationalism. Years later, in Pondicherry, Sri Aurobindo had said about Sudhir, Oh, that fearless Sudhir! In May 1908, Sri Aurobindo was indicted in the Alipur bomb case. He was kept in jail for one whole year as an under-trial prisoner. Within a few days, Sudhir was arrested in Khulna and was taken to the same jail. In no time, there were about 40 revolutionaries caught in the Alipur bomb case. In jail, Sudhir started taking care of Sri Aurobindo as a duty with love and respect. In the Alipur jail, most of the time Sri Aurobindo remained in trance, unconcerned about his outward needs. This was a great opportunity for Sudhir to accomplish the work assigned to him. Faithfully, he served his master. Nolinida, who was also convicted, recounts, I remember an incident that took place during the trial in the Alipur Sessions Court. We Swadeshis were herded into a cage in the courtroom. At that time, a sentry on duty noticed that Sri Aurobindo looked quite unconcerned and unmindful of all that was happening. He shook Sri Aurobindo roughly. Sudhir, seeing this, jumped from the gallery where he was seated with his raised hands shackled in handcuffs, ready to strike the sentry on his head. We were shocked to see Sudhir and some of us shouted, Sudhir, stop! What are you doing? Stop! And calm down! Luckily, we managed to push Sudhir aside, muttering away. What audacity that fellow has to touch Sri Aurobindo! I will finish him off. Had we not intervened in time, we might have witnessed a murder in the courtroom. Sudhir was indeed looking after Sri Aurobindo and keeping a watch. Nolinida again recounts, Something sensational happened one day. The cabin man at the railway level crossing near Deoghar was called to identify me as a man who has been passing to and fro near his cabin. This would prove my complicity in the bomb case and get me to the Andamans without fail. Sudhir whispered to me, You stand in the front line with a quiet, nonchalant air. I shall be just behind. Sudhir showed by his fumbling as if he was trying to hide himself. The old man got so confused that he shouted out pointing at Sudhirda, That was the man, over there, I have seen him. This settled the point. Through this fiasco, 
the path to my release was made clear and as it is known sudhirda was sent to andamans what a love for a colleague in may 1909 shri robindo was acquitted with some others while sudhir and about 17 revolutionaries were sentenced to transportation for life to the andamans for waging war against the king faced with this situation sudhir asked shri robindo if they torture us what shall we do think of me i shall always be with you was his reply and since then throughout his life sudhir always felt a hand saving him in difficult and dangerous situations in the andamans jail from 1909 to 1914 the revolutionaries were tortured with brutality the suffering that man has inflicted on man is unimaginable and to think that this was done by supposedly civilized people the revolutionaries were made to do various jobs such as coir pounding and rope making the length of the rope per day was fixed or working at the oil mill the quantity of the oil to be prepared was fixed making salt the quantity of salt to be made was fixed brick making carrying water etc the list is endless the work demanded was unimaginably exhausting and if the quota given was not completed it led to punishment and no food the authorities tried their best to ruin them physically psychologically and morally sudhir recounts many painful incidents here is just one of them he said we were given very meager food and if we asked for more we were whipped the only thing they wanted us to do was to work and work one day we were so very hungry that we ate cow fodder that lay in our reach just imagine how hungry they must have been after those days sudhir could never tolerate the wastage of food again sudhir recounts life thus went on at the andamans yet we noticed that we had somewhere deep within us a source of quiet strength a peace which always remained with us it was the faith in the heart that shri aurobindo was with us that enabled us to live on even in that hell it was his mantra which sustained us from the year 1914 sudhir was kept in various jails on the mainland once for a whole year he was kept alone in the jungles of assam finally he was released in 1918 as a mere skeleton sapped of all vitality he had spent 10 years of the best period of his life in hell what sustained him was his experience of the motherland as a living deity this was the source of his inspiration and his strength within a few years he again came in touch with shri aurobindo and from 1938 he began to visit pondicherry sudhir now sought to build his life in a different way but his love for his motherland still guided him 
He had married Suniti Devi as it was a condition put by the government, but he could never abandon his wish to liberate the motherland. He continued to help in the revolutionary work and inspire the young generation. And as the government never left Sudhir alone, there were times he would even have to go into hiding. Life was not so safe. There was a telegram sent from Pondicherry to Khulna on 12th November 1940. Sudhir Kumar Bhagchi, Khulna. Blessings, protection, things. Mother Sri Aurobindo. And a similar one on the 12th of December, one month later. In the year 1943, Sudhir finally came with his family and joined the ashram community, becoming a part of the organization. He took on various responsibilities. Whenever there was a need of something, he came forward. He helped in the making of chunnam, pottery, handmade paper, washing soap. He facilitated cloth dyeing and homeopathy. He also assisted with construction and plumbing and built flush toilets with septic tanks. Sudhir used to send a diary about his work on his various ventures to the mother. On 26th January 1944, He asked the mother for her permission to have thinner cloth so that the quality of handmade paper which he was making could be improved. The mother tells him, Bimala, in charge of the weaving section, will do it. In this way, Sudhir used to send to the mother a detailed report of his work and expenses and seek her advice. For more than 30 years, Sudhir served the mother and Sri Aurobindo, living as a member of the large ashram community. Tous les soirs, les disciples très âgés, ceux qui travaillent dans les bureaux, viennent faire leur gymnastique sous la direction d'un moniteur. Le plus vieux a 85 ans.
mother said about Sudhir when she saw him on his 80th birthday. Sudhir is very receptive physically. It is a gift from the divine grace because he has done so much for Sri Aurobindo. In course of the conversation, she added, Oh, to be close to Sri Aurobindo is not only an exceptional privilege, it is something unique. Sudhir is very fortunate, a life lived in Sri Aurobindo's aura. One can feel it immediately, a life lived in his aura.